Hello everyone, I'm hopping on just casually today because I want to talk about what's going on in the world. Obviously, uh, in case you didn't hear, Israel is de has declared war, right? They've been attacked a couple days ago. And so I want to talk about all of this in light of Bible prophecy, in light of what should we as the church uh, be doing. Of course, obviously, we should be praying for the peace of Jerusalem, the peace of Israel, right? That is God's chosen people. Um, and so I want to talk to you a little bit about some stuff in Jude. And obviously, we can see, I'll just start off by saying this, obviously, Matthew 24, Jesus talked about the end of the age. And he talked about what was going to happen leading up to the end of the age and the second coming of Christ. And so two, two of the things he talks about is earthquakes. And so if you didn't know, last night, there was a massive earthquake in Afghanistan, 2000 people died. Uh, and he talks about wars and rumors of wars. And he talks about all these different signs. Uh, but what th what's important to recognize that he said, he said it would be like a woman uh, having contractions, these birth pains. And so why is that important? Because contractions, they get closer together and they get more intense as the the birth of the baby's coming right so there's an increase of frequency and there's an increase of intensity so obviously there have always been wars there have always been earthquakes there have always been these things throughout history but what you have to understand is that they're getting more intense and more frequent and a lot of people think, because I just know from talking to people, people just think, oh, it, it's always been like this. But if you actually study it out, you go through history uh, and you take chunks of time. Okay, this 25 year period, this 25, there have been more earthquakes in the past bulk of years that we've been alive. There have been more famines. There have been more uh, rumors of wars, right? So all these things are increasing in frequency and intensity. And that's how we know that we are fast approaching the end of the age, not to mention the fact that Israel is actually a nation. If you're my age, you were not alive at the time where Israel was not a nation. But you have to understand that all throughout all of history, Israel, after Jesus died and was resurrected, right? Israel was scattered. Israel was not a nation until 1948. Israel was reborn as a nation. And that is one massive sign that we are approaching the end of the age. The Bible prophesied it that Israel would be reborn as a nation. And we know also through Bible prophecy that all of all the nations of the earth are going to align against Israel. They want to destroy Israel, right? That's God's chosen people. So I say all this to say, if you're a Christian and you believe the Bible, you can clearly see that we are approaching the end of the age. We are approaching uh, the second coming of Christ. We're approaching the rapture of the church. And so one of the things I wanted to talk about, uh, really, I have so many things on my mind, but one of the things I wanted to talk about is Luke 17. Jesus says, as it was in the days of Noah and as it was in the days of Lot, so shall it be in the days leading up to the coming of the son of man, right? The, the second coming of Christ. And what's so interesting about this, there, there's two things I want to pull out. Firstly, I want to talk about briefly, what did it look like in the days of Noah? And what did it look like in the days of Lot? In the days of Noah, um, before the flood, why did God have to send a flood? Because there was great sexual perversion. And this is what I want to talk to you about. So Genesis 6.1, it talks about how the sons of God or angels, they began to mate with human women. And I know I lost some of y'all right there. Y'all are like, what are y'all talking about? Yes, it's true. It's in the Bible. You can go study it out for yourself. I've done extensive study on it. It's very interesting. Um, but basically, and then in Jude verse six, it talks about these angels. This is uh, Jude six angels who did not keep their own domain, but abandoned their proper dwelling place. Uh, these he has kept in eternal restraints until the day of judgment. So these angels came down, they mated with women and God has chained them up. They're, they're in uh, awaiting the day of judgment. And it says in verse 7, just as Sodom and Gomorrah and these cities around them, just in the same way as these angels indulged in sexual perversion and went after strange flesh. So the two things that marked the days of Noah was um, sexual perversion where men went after strange flesh. And it's the same thing in Sodom and Gomorrah, sexual perversion. Sexual perversion was the two biggest uh, things of ungodliness that marked the days of Noah and the days of Lot. And if you know anything, 
you know that we are seeing an increase in sexual perversion more than ever before. That's another massive sign that we are approaching the end of the age. We're approaching the second coming of Christ is this sexual perversion. Okay. But what I really wanted to talk about is to encourage you on the, on the positive side. If you are a Christian, the two things about Noah and Lot, right, is that they were pulled out before judgment came. So Noah, because he, he was righteous, him and his family, that God, you know, preserved them from the judgment of the flood. God had to destroy this wickedness. Um, and so judgment was coming, but Noah and his family were preserved, right? They were preserved from judgment. So if you are a Christian, this is awesome. We don't have to be afraid in these days. We do not have to live in fear because we are going to be preserved from the judgment that is coming upon the earth. The judgment that is coming upon the wicked. The judgment is, that is coming upon the ungodly. Jesus didn't save you uh, so that you could go through judgment. Jesus saved us from judgment. So Noah was pulled out. Same thing with Lot. Sodom and Gomorrah, God rained down brims fire and brimstone, right? Upon this ungodliness, upon this wickedness. And that was the judgment of God. But Lot was pulled out. Angels hurried him out of the city before that destruction and that judgment came upon that city. And Jesus said, just like that, that's exactly how it's going to be in the last days at the end of the age before Jesus returns. So what does that mean? We as the church, we are going to be pulled out of this earth before the judgment of God comes upon the earth. And what am I talking about? I'm talking about the rapture of the church. I'm talking about what it says in the Bible. It says that the church, that we will be caught up. We will be caught up with Christ in the air. And so what's awesome about this, we're going to be caught up. What am I talking about? We're going to be caught up before the great tribulation where the bowls of God's judgment are poured out. I'm talking about what's in the book of Revelation. But what's interesting, and I've been studying today, and I wanted to get on with you and share this. The book of Jude is right before the book of Revelation. And it almost, you know, as I'm reading it, it's, it's, it's like a, it's a book that's written to the final hour church. I encourage you. That's what I want to encourage you today is to go study out the book of Jude. And what I just read you was there about the days of Noah, the days of Lot. It talks about the sexual perversion. It talks about the great falling away. And the, the, he opens up his letter by saying, I wanted to write to you concerning our common salvation, but I found it necessary and was impelled to write to you urgently to contend for the faith contend for the faith. Jude felt this urgency to tell them you have to contend for the faith. And then he talks about all of this ungodliness that we know is increasing, right? In the world today, there's darkness is increasing. Ungodliness is increasing. But guess what? God also has a plan for his church in these days. And that's that we would contend for the faith, that we would rise and shine with the glory of God in the midst of darkness. And so he goes on in Jude and he talks about, um, he actually talks about something that Enoch prophesied. I just found this super interesting. I just want to share this with you. Enoch, uh, you know, many of you know, he, the Bible says that he walked with God and he was not. Enoch was raptured. Enoch was raptured. Uh, you can read about him in the book of Genesis. It doesn't say much about him. Um, but this is a, is a prophecy that Enoch gave. And it's quoted in Jude verse 14. It says that, it was of these people, moreover, that Enoch in the seventh generation from Adam prophesied when he said, Behold, the Lord comes with his myriads of holy, holy ones, tens of thousands of his saints to execute judgment upon all and to convict the ungodly uh, of the deeds which they have committed. Uh, and it goes on to talk more about it. But what I want you to see here is that e Enoch was uh, like it says he was in the seventh generation from Adam. So this was like in the beginning of time, Enoch literally prophesied about the second coming of Christ. And he said that he saw, he obviously had a vision or something of Jesus coming back to the earth with tens of thousands of his saints. What is that talking about? That's talking about the people of God, the church that had been raptured, right? Whenever we are raptured before the great tribulation, Jesus is going to return at the end of the tribulation with those that have been raptured with his saints. And it says that he's coming back to the earth to execute judgment with tens of thousands of his saints, those whom he has redeemed, those who have been preserved from judgment. 
And it's, and then, you know, it go, and I'm not going to get into all of Bible prophecy and all that kind of stuff, but we're going to rule and reign on this earth for a thousand years um, with Christ. And that's awesome. And why am I telling you this? Because we can take heart. This has been prophesied from the beginning of time, right? All of this stuff. And that's why we don't, we can be, have certainty in this hour. We don't have to be confused and wondering what the heck's going on. We don't have to be in fear, right? We don't have to be in fear. You know, I love my pastor at Victory Church. Pastor Frank actually talked about this morning how he actually talked out of Psalm 91 and about the protection of the Lord. And you have to understand that um, no devil in hell can take you out till you're finished your race. No matter what kind of crazy stuff is coming upon the world, you have to understand that you're protected in Christ. If God has called you to do something, if he has given you an assignment, no devil in hell can take you out until you have completed your God-given assignment. And you have to trust that you are protected in Christ. You're protected in Christ until the rapture, until the rapture or until I'm done my assignment, no evil can prevail against the people of God, right? And so let me jump back to this, what I was going to talk about in Jude. So in Jude, he's talking about these, these people that are ungodly, the ungodliness that's going to increase. And I wanted to read this. One of the people he's talking about is grumblers, people who complain about their lot in life. So we don't want to be counted among those who complain. And then it says those who are going after their own desires and passions, right? Ungodly passions. They're following these ungodly lusts. And so why I wanted to bring that out to say, as believers, we need to contend for the faith and we need to be on guard against this stuff. That's why I encourage you to go read the whole book of Jude. Uh, we need to be on guard against these things and commit ourselves. Lord, I am committed to fulfilling the assignment of God on my life. In the midst of a crazy world, in the midst of ungodliness, I'm going to set my life apart for the work of God. I'm going to do what God's called me to do. I'm not just going to live my life after my own desires. I'm not going to live for myself. I'm not going to just live a cute little American life and just... For what? Because, and, and you know, my pastor was saying this this morning. It was so good. He's like, you know, people want to preserve their own life for what? So you can have a big house, so you can get a nice car. For what? It's all, all, everything in this world is passing away. But the word of God remains forever. And the people of God and the kingdom of God are eternal. So I just want to encourage you with that. And it says in, in Jude, if you go on. Verse 20, it talks about what should we do? It says, but you beloved, build yourselves up in the most holy faith, praying in the spirit. I just did a podcast on praying in the spirit. I encourage you to go on our YouTube channel and listen to it. Praying in the spirit. What Praying in the spirit helps you stay in the plan of God. It helps you stay in your God-given assignment. And he goes on to say, uh, guard and keep yourselves in the love of God and expect and patiently wait for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ that will bring us into eternal life. Uh, and then he goes on in 20, verse 23, he says, strive to save others, snatching them out of the fire. Um, and then he says, loathing even the garments spotted by the flesh and polluted by their sensuality. So we are seeking to save people right in this final hour. Uh, but even more than that, we need to be so careful, hating even the garment that is spotted by the flesh. But this is my favorite verse, verse 24, and I'll end with this. Verse 24, but to him who is able to keep you without stumbling or slipping or falling and to present you unblemished and blameless and faultless before the presence of his glory and triumphant joy and exaltation with unspeakable ecstatic delight. That's powerful to him who is able to keep you without stumbling, slipping or falling and to present you blameless before God. That's our portion. If you're a believer, I don't know about you, but I want to live my Christian life in these days without stumbling, slipping, or falling so that I can be pre present myself before the glory of God blameless, right? That's our portion in Christ Jesus. And I encourage you, if you want to learn more about what is, what is the church's um, role in the end times, the days that we are living in. I have a video on my YouTube channel. Also, I talk about the glorious end time church, and I encourage you to go check that out. It's going to greatly encourage you to rise up and to shine with the glory of God in these days like never before in Jesus mighty name.